all of a sudden as a coach you can start testing yourself a little bit you can actually bring in the tactics bring in the phases of play a little bit more welcome to the show highlight the roots as you can see I'm on my own this is a unprecedented time for everyone in the world um, but I still wanted to deliver some content to to you guys um, what I've noticed on a lot on social media is coaches are offering like ball mastery skills to players and uh, that they can do in the back garden I spoke about it on on last week's show um, also I'm thinking there's going to be coaches out there that are going to be going a little bit wapo, a little bit nuts really, you know, we're all lively people, we're all sports people, we're all desperate to keep learning ourselves and desperate to keep teaching and coaching our players, no matter what age group. So the show I thought I'd deliver today is based on a little bit of tactical situation. Um, my grassroots team are 9v9, under 11s, uh, I do coach an under 19s team as well have had experience at under 10s, under 9s, where they play 7v7. But I remember thinking to myself when we went from 7v7 to 9v9, all of a sudden as a coach you can start testing yourself a little bit. You can actually bring in the tactics, bring in the phases of play a little bit more. Some coaches might already be doing it at 7v7. I know we, we had some tactics at 7v7, nothing crazy. Um, didn't overload the players, it was more, more in our minds as coaches. But you do start thinking to yourself the players need to develop a little bit um, in terms of tactical knowledge at some stage and with the offside trap coming in at this age group and at this uh, this format then it starts to become a little bit more important to um, to give yourself that uh, opportunity to coach this to your players and you know you guys need the knowledge um, first and foremost before you can pass it on to the players so like any format of football uh, there is hundreds and hundreds of different tactics you can you can deploy. Um, I I've done a YouTube video in my, on my other channel uh, on nine v nine football and how it's played. I'm not really going to go too much into today on uh, the ins and outs of phases of play, etc. I just want to particularly show you a different you guys a few different formations. So we will start with the um, three four one formation, and I have got. Um, two two different versions of it right here. Nothing nothing particularly different. If you look at the red team, um, pen. If you look at the red team with a three-player defence in a line, if you're thinking of playing the offside trap, could work. And uh, the structure there, the three guys together, nice and compact as a unit. The two in front of them, and I've got my sort of right midfielder, left midfielder, just a little bit higher than the two central midfielders, just offering that uh, situation where you can pretty much join the attack and actually become a 3-2-3 pretty quickly. I know it's a little bit more in depth in transition from defence to attack than just moving a couple of counter pieces forward by a few yards, but it does give you an indication of how quickly they can become um, the forwards in this in this uh, formation. Uh, as opposed to the blue team, where I've got the two kind of sitting in front of what you probably would like to class as an old fashioned sweeper. Um, that just gives the players at this age that little bit of security in my experience of, don't force the offside trap onto them if they've not got it too much. Literally they've got a player behind them for that cover, for that extra security themselves. And then they can probably be a little bit more expansive. What I have done in this one, and this is just my interpretation, is I've got literally a flat flat midfield four there, and I haven't got the two players so high. Not for any particular reason, more to the point that more to the point that if we did have these here, it would become a three two three. We'll move on to that formation more in a minute. So let's have a quick look at, at, at tactical pad now in a, so you can see it a little bit clearly on, on the screen. As you can see we've got the um, players and the movement there that they can go from the red team with the 3-4-1 getting the two wide midfielders to become 
more as your forwards and, and joining the attacker who's obviously in this formation on his own. That can still happen with the blue team, no problem. Um, I do believe though, that if you look at the blue team, once the, once the forwards go that little bit further up, uh, once the wide midfielders sorry, go that little bit further up, we have got a big exposed area at fullback. Um, purely because the guys, the girls who are playing at centre half are a little bit compact to each other, a little bit closer together to each other. As in like the as opposed to the red team where they've got a flat back three and they can afford to become more of a fullback and go out of that little that little zonal area that I've um, that I've created there. Um, you you guys, you know, you guys are all coaches, you know exactly what you're doing or and, and how you want your team to play and your own beliefs. Everyone, that's the beauty of this football, of this game, is everyone's got their own ideas of what they want to do and, and how they see the game and how they want it to play, even with 9v9 format. So if you're thinking to yourself, you're happy to have these these players out here a little bit wider than what I would probably, I like, I like compact football, I like my players to be compact out of possession. But in possession, I would obviously encourage my players to play a lot wider, especially if the goalkeeper's got the ball, looking for a bit of support over here. We can have cover from our midfielders who can just drop in and create that situation and, that's, and close those gaps. Now, if you've got the compactness out of possession, the problem you've got with both these three 4-1 formations, as I just mentioned a minute ago, is these areas here, if they get exposed, they are gonna really, really, Test, test your team's um, shifting from left to right. And uh, if, you've, if you've coached that into them, or you want to coach that into your players, you should be able to pull that off quite, quite well. Um, this is what I meant by, at the beginning, about testing yourselves as coaches, because other coaches will play different formations um, than the 3-4-1. I think the 3 4 is quite a popular one, but other coaches will play different formations against you think even at this age to try and combat what you're doing um, and this does expose the wide areas not so much as a 242 which we'll go into now okay the 242 formation got a bit of history with this um, one of my teams last year the coach at the time who was supporting me persuaded me to um, pop in a 242 formation I think we were three nil down at half time against a really strong side um, if she's watching this, she might remember it. I'm not saying it was her fault that we got absolutely nailed that, that second half. Uh, there was a lot of um, other circumstances that went towards uh, the fact that we did get absolutely hammered. And on the flip side, I have played this since um, it, with another team and it did work out quite well. Um, the problem, I think, on that day is no one was used to it. And the biggest, the biggest negative on this situation with a 2-4-2 is again these fullback areas and your players knowing is it this player to pick up as it drop back of course it is do these players come in and cover they should do at times or is it the centre halves job to come in and cover now, like any tactics board you start writing lines and squiggly arrows etc it's going to get messy now if you're asking, in my opinion, if you're asking nine-year-olds, uh, ten-year-olds, nine-year-olds if they're playing up a little bit, eleven-year-olds, uh, twelve-year-olds, etc., who are playing this format, to remember all this, you know, you you're going to give yourself a problem. Um, in in my opinion, and my experience. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it can't work. You've just got to give players the responsibility to know the fact that if we're being attacked in this area. It is this player's job, or if it's opposite, it's that player's job there, and not the centre halves or the centre mids to drop in. On the red side, I have given them, again like I did before, a situation of the wide midfielders playing just that little bit higher. So if this was me, I would probably give more responsibility to the centre halves to cover those fullback areas. Uh, with a blue team, you've got your Flat four probably would give 
the responsibility to these wide players as opposed to these guys coming in and covering here um, if, if we're attacked down, down the wide areas which obviously happens quite a lot in football so you have to be really again uh, you know set for that because you know even at this even at this age your opposition coach will see weaknesses in your in your formation your tactics and they'll they'll go for you um, the advantages of this of course are right here in the middle you've got I'm gonna get rid of the football you've got two players partnering each other in this unit here and this unit here which obviously can is going to be an advantage rather than having a, a lone striker. Um, as a, in the three-four-one, we have lone striker. We, you know, it's going to, you need you need a big, strong player if you're having a lone striker. Again, with one of my teams, with my experience, playing a small, quick centre forward didn't really work um, in the in the three-four-one formation. So having a partner, all of a sudden that player she she became a different different player until we actually moved to positions. But that's another. Story for another show. Again, what you can do with go for the rest team, you can change it around so you've got someone in behind the striker. So you're kind of playing a two-four-one-one one if you like. Um, again, it's one of them things. It's your adaptations and your ideas. Do you want two together, or do you want drop one dropping in behind the other? One of the biggest things I've noticed in in um, 9v9 football so far is the lack of knowledge on the players to cover each other so going back to the let's just switch it over back to the um, 3 4 3 4 1 a minute so we'll do that really quickly so going into that situation one of the biggest problems I noticed with in midfield was is when the when the, the guys or the girls are going forward and attacking we've got these big gaps and you're asking these guys to cover and then we've got a big gap in behind. So what we tended to do this season is basically ask the midfielders to play like this. You know, if you've got your midfielder just dropping in, this guy could come in here and help out a little bit. Um, and giving players responsibility and ownership on a pitch is new to them. And, and it's, a good, it's a good thing because they've got to get used to this as they learn to play football and they develop themselves a little bit. But that also, from a coach's point of view, it stopped the uh, the panic of player the opposition coming straight through the middle and having this big gap here between the two units of the defenders and the midfielders. And you could always do it like that if you've got a smart player. Again, leaves you quite exposed. Depends how brave you are. We've done that a little bit, depending on what team we're playing against. But I think this gap here in this midfield area can be a big problem for teams. Um, if you've got a uh, Ratter players who work really really hard in midfield, then then fair enough they'll get back there. But if you're playing at a top level, they'll already they will have already exposed you by the time you're looking to get back anyway. So so that's another formation. Um, I'm going to now look at the three two three formation. Okay, couple of um, very different three two three formations. Again, pretty much how I like to play compact here out of possession with the blue team but very wide and expansive uh, in the attacking uh, areas and pretty much predominantly asking these players to stay wide as good old fashioned wingers um, opposed to the Reds team where we have the unit of three players here playing in tandem next to each other you know how close can we be to each other when we lose the ball um, if there is there, I always coach my players and say to them, is there an easy option? If your teammates are doing their job, there should be an easy option constantly all the time. Um, again, I'll do another show on that. Um, but if you're supporting each other, there should be an easy option for an easy pass. Whether that player takes that pass or not is another matter, but there should be an easy option for an easy pass. The smartest thing I want to mention with this formation is... With the two here, you're looking at your two cent uh, centre midfielders, they're pretty much two CDMs, which then will allow these players here the options of going wide and high if we need to when we've got the ball at the goalkeeper's feet or the centre half here, because we've got players who can just fill in. You're also asking a re uh, part of the responsibility of your number nine is to just drop in. So your number nine is probably actually going to be your number 10. You're asking them to play centre forward, 
or her. But at the same time, having that responsibility, if these drop into here, because we're moving, just dropping into that area, that vacated area there, just in case we lose it. Um, again, it's one, of them, it's one of them formations that you can adapt as a coach with your own knowledge. Just wanted to show you that. This one here, you're probably going to be asking your midfielders with the blue team to support uh, and obviously asking your centre forward to come and support where the ball is as well as your as well as your defenders for overloads if that's what you're looking to create there. There's, there's various areas of the pitch and we could do shows all day and we could do tactics all day as in where players would go. Um, one of the reasons why we created this this um, this chat show, it's not a chat show if I'm talking about it, but one of the reasons why we created this chat show was so coaches from around the world can send us in their ideas and their, their let's, let's have it right, let's say their problems, you know, if they've got problems and thinking, how can we stop what's been happening to us? How can we cut out the amount of goals that we can see? How can we score more goals? How can we have um, better phase of play? How can we teach players overloads? You know, we're looking for that information. Send that information to us. Comment below, send us what you're looking for for us to do. I'm happily, throughout this period of break time that we're on as, a, as in the world of football, I'll do as, as many shows as possible with my knowledge whilst I'm on my own as to what you guys want. So please, please send it in. Um, today we've covered a little bit briefly the 341, the 242, and the 323. Hope you enjoyed what I've what I've set out here. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of um, of what I've shown you. Give you a little bit of things uh, things to think about. And there's loads loads more we could have gone through. Loads more. And as I say, I'll try and put out a few more a few more quick shows on phases of play, in possession, out of possession. Uh, a few little tricks and tips that I can offer offer coaches from again from my from my knowledge of football. And um, and just remember, this isn't this isn't set in stone this is just my opinion everyone's entitled to their opinion this is my opinion now some formations should be played or could be played you guys will have hundreds of adaptations to these and if you have i'd like to see them because i need to learn as well so for now everyone stay healthy don't forget the stage whilst this video is going out wash your hands 20 seconds remember to keep um, keep well and look after each other social distancing as you can see has happened in my house everyone's cleared off from me um, and I'll look forward to creating the next video. Don't know what it'll be on, but look out for that.